We're gonna chit chat about some of these. You're going to make me blush. I've never. I don't think I've been ever <laughs> uh, considered a mentor before. So that's oh, pretty yeah, cool. Oh yeah, dude. No, because I mean, you helped me out. Right? <laughs> For example, we have. Um, I believe this is a 1970 uh, Rolex uh, reference 1680, and um, the 1680 obviously has a date. Um, and this is a red sub. Yeah, everything looks good. We'll hit it with some UV, but there's um, consistent consistency in the luminous uh, texture as well. That's one thing that I look for. Uh, so this is looking at it under 300 times. Can I look through it? Yeah, for sure. So let's go to 300. I want to move it to 300. Let's see. Is it 300 now? Where are we going? Got a nice treat for you vintage lovers. No, they're, they're big on social media. Yeah, they have their own. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo. What's up, man? What's up, dude? Come on in. Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Hey, nice to meet you. You yeah. too? I don't think we met last time. <laughs> no. I did not. You weren't here. This is Darby, our videographer. Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Hey, guys. I want to introduce you guys to somebody very special and somebody I've known for quite some time, a vintage lover like myself, uh, Cameron Barr with Craft & Tailored. Hey, thanks for having Marco. really appreciate you guys coming out. Welcome to our showroom. So we've known each other for about a few years. Yeah. I would say about give or take, it's been a while. I would say five or six. Yeah, definitely. So I would actually look at this guy like one of my early on mentors when I first got into vintage watches because I'd actually probably, I think I bugged you a few times on quite quite a for lot sure. of stuff I didn't know about early on. I was like, hey, Cameron, does this look right to you? I don't know. And you and you schooled me so many times early on and I really appreciate it. Yeah, that no, no, you, no, it's all so, good. So um, we're out here today. We got some pieces in front of us. Uh, we're definitely gonna chit chat about some of these you're pieces. Gonna, you're gonna make me blush. I've never, I don't think I've been ever <laughs> uh, considered a mentor before. So that's oh, pretty yeah, cool. Oh yeah, dude, no, because I mean, you helped me out and I have to give credit where it's due, man. You yeah, really no, did. I appreciate that. I mean, I remember, how many times have we met up at those uh, those coffee shops? Coffee shops, on, yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Silver Lake. Silver Lake, yeah. yeah, a couple, yeah. There's a couple cool coffee shops in, in yeah, Silver Lake. Definitely. We're obviously based in uh, in LA, and which is kind of interesting because within like the vintage watch you know community, I think we're one of, if not just a, one of a few uh, vintage specific dealers here in uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in the vintage watch world, there's you, so much information out there. Right? Like it yeah, can, it can get very dizzy if you're you know if you're getting into this and you don't at least have you know, some basis of where to start and where to look for correct information. It's like if you go on the internet, there's going to be misinformation everywhere. And, yeah. you know, and that's why it's important to like reach out to somebody that, you know, will know something about vintage. If you feel like you're confident in them, definitely reach out to them. And I, it never hurts to ask, you know, ask, ask people, because if you get big into it, then there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to learn and it's very rewarding. Well, it was funny. We were we were talking before we sat down, like with uh, you know Anthony about like you know fifty four oh twos and right. and you know vintage um, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. You know we we have one here, and the thing that's interesting is the average person might look at this and go, oh, it's an AP, it's a Royal Oak fifteen two oh two. Maybe it's a fifteen two oh two. Yeah, right. But when we look at something like this, I'm looking at you know. The profile of the screws, the case finishing, uh, you know, the font of of that dial, you know, something as simple as like the flip lock, the flip lock, right? right? The screws in the side of the link, the bevels on the case, the you know, characteristic of the two and the serial number, that kind of stuff. So we get really, really deep, and um, it's it's definitely pretty pretty nerdy, but um, <laughs> but we look at that kind of stuff very closely, and that's ultimately, I think, within the vintage realm what makes these things unique and, right. and in some cases expensive, but ultimately very collectible. I mean, here's the thing. So I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty sharp with the four digit sport models, but I'm just now kind of leaning into the uh, vintage paddocks and the vintage APs, but I still have a long ways to go. Yeah, so what, one of the things that we were talking about, about is like how like a little detail can make the biggest difference. Right. For example, we have, um, I believe this is a 1970 uh, Rolex uh, reference 1680, and um, the 1680 obviously has a date, um, right. and this is a red sub, but one of the things that's, that's interesting about this specific uh, version, as we were kind of talking about, is this has uh, a meter's first depth rating. What's interesting is this one you know, has something as simple as uh, you know, red paint over white in right. Submariner, which is specific to Mark II variants of the dial, and then also it's meters first versus feet first. So right. that tiny little detail, which to most people would probably go unnoticed, brings probably 
about a thirty-five or forty thousand dollar premium to this versus the the year later. So um, this watch is the Hoyer Monaco, and the reference on this is eleven thirty-three. You know, the thing that's interesting with a lot of these watches in the in the beginning part is you know people look at them as like luxury items or icons of design but a, a lot of the watches when they were originally produced had form meeting function there was a reason why right. things were done with the watch right so this watch has the nickname uh the steve mcqueen because steve mcqueen wore uh hoyer monaco 1133b in the film le mans okay. and steve kind of like paul newman was this cool handsome style icon of a dude. The dial of this watch originally started off as blue, but through time has kind of taken on like this tropical effect. The case of the watch is in unpolished condition and it does show wear, but right. remains it's unpolished. Okay. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about this where, you know, the watch actually has a crown that's offset. So instead of the crown being on like the right hand side of the case, the crown is actually on the left side. And so with the 1133B, um, Hoy this was a driving watch. Hoyer wanted the crown to be on the other side so that when your hand was on a, a steering wheel, the crown didn't dig into the top side of your right. wrist. But then the pushers are also there. So as, as your hand's up on the, on the top side of the steering wheel, you can, you know, actually, yeah. yeah, you can operate the chronograph for timing lap times and stuff like that. My, uh, my microscope has a nickname. The exterminator. The judge. The judge. Yeah. That's awesome. Nothing gets past the judge. <laughs> it's judgment day now. You know the price goes down when he busts this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> or goes up. It depends. Good dial. Good shape. Yep. Yeah, everything looks good. We'll hit it with some UV, but there's... Um, Consistent consistency in the luminous uh, texture as well. That's one thing that I look for. Uh, so this is looking at it under 300 times. Can I look through it? Yeah, for sure. Most people are looking at stuff under like 1500 or uh, 15X or 10X. Right. This is 300. Jesus. So this is, yeah, this is adjust it so you can pop it into focus. Oh my God. Isn't that nuts? So I was looking at the luminous there's, material. There's, micro, there's, like a, there's life under this dial. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the bacteria swimming around. Exactly. You're like, it doesn't have enough bacteria. It's not yeah, It's not good. No, <laughs> not enough microbes. But, you know, it's like when you're looking at Paul Newman's and stuff that's in the three to $500,000 range, like... Right. It definitely microscope. Comes yeah. Get yourself a $1,500 microscope with good glass and, that's you insane. know... Do you have a camera that can link up to this? Definitely. Yeah. That's so we've, we've done that for a few clients where we've, you know, looked to do appraisals and authentications and stuff, and we'll take photos of specific details using a, a microscope. This dial's like perfect. It's cool. You know, what's really interesting is if you look at it, it's one of the key characteristics of an early dial is that the lacquer was so thin mm. um, that it'll, you can kind of see some tropicalization happening. Yeah, I see it. You see that? It's like yeah. the brass is kind of coming through. Right. So the dial looks flawless to the naked eye, but when you look at it under 300X. Yeah, you can find issues. Right, and a lot of times I'm looking for those issues as well, right? Yeah. I'm looking it's for, indicator. exactly. I'm looking for the maker's marks, right? I'm looking for the flaws. If you look at this, uh, the Swiss and the Sigmas yeah. at, at the see, six o'clock, yeah, you see those serifs? Yeah. Another key indicator. So like if you're looking at something that's like a replica or inauthentic or whatever, mm -hmm. A lot of those details are like missing. Yeah, you're not going to be able to find that, right? Wow, that's really so. Neat. Looking at something under 15x versus 300x is cray, right? Like totally, wow. totally different. Okay. Check this out. Let's go to 300. I'm gonna move it to 300. Let's see. Is it 300 now? Oh, you go up. Let's see if we can get here. Let me see. Kind of crazy, right? Yeah, it's cool. At least people can kind of see what what's in there. Yeah. What talking about now, you know. Tyler, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. Good seeing you, Tyler. Thanks. Good seeing you as always. Good. Yeah, tell yeah. more up here. Next time you come out here, you should take us and show us coffee. So take us to lunch. Show us where your favorite lunch is. Show us a car. Thanks, <laughs> <Just> whatever. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks All for coming. Right. Absolutely. Yeah.